Hello, I'm Shauna Walhorn with the League of Women Voters. Along with the League and SFGovTV, I'm here to discuss Proposition P, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 8th. The city has various programs that provide financing to developers to build new affordable housing and rehabilitate existing affordable housing. The Mayor's Office of Housing and Community Development administers most of these programs. When the Housing Office has funds available for an affordable housing project, it posts a description of the proposed project on its website and invites developers to submit proposals. Under current practice, the posting describes the criteria used to select a proposal and sets a deadline for submissions. Criteria generally include the anticipated cost to the city, how much experience the developer has with similar projects, the financial feasibility of the developer's proposal, the quality of the developer's design and ability to engage in a community design process, and the extent to which the proposal meets community needs. The Housing Office may then select a qualified developer to proceed with an affordable housing project even if it receives fewer than three proposals. Under Proposition P, the City would proceed with an affordable housing project on City-owned property only if the Housing Office receives at least three proposals. Proposition P would also make most current selection criteria part of City law. A yes vote means you want to prohibit the City from proceeding with an affordable housing project on City-owned property unless the Housing Office receives at least three proposals. A no vote means you do not want to make this change. I'm here with Leah Pimentel, campaign manager for Yes on P and a proponent of the measure. We're also joined by Don Falk, CEO of the Tenderloin Neighborhood Development Corporation and an opponent of Proposition P. Thank you both for being here. I'd like to start with some opening remarks and we will begin with Leah. Thank you. We're in the middle of a housing crisis and it's more important than ever to make every dollar count when it comes to building more affordable housing. But as it stands today, we're wasting millions every year because we do not have a transparent in place for awarding city money to build affordable housing. A handful of developers who know how to work the system are securing the vast majority of city contracts and are building these units at skyrocket cost. Spur estimates that it should cost 500000 to build one unit of affordable housing in San Francisco, but recent affordable housing developers like 490 South Van Ness cost $900,000 per unit. That's ridiculous. As a San Francisco taxpayer, I demand better. Thank you, Leah. Don. Thank you. Uh, I have been, uh, I'm the CEO of TNDC. I've been in the affordable housing world since the early 1980s, and I serve on some national boards, and so I have a good exposure to how affordable housing works across the city. San Francisco has a, a great system that is the envy of many of other cities in, in the country. Very sophisticated, very productive. We produce 30,000 units of affordable housing. I don't know exactly really why the measure is on the ballot. I think it is driven by a misunderstanding of what the cost drivers of affordable housing are. And as we get into why affordable housing costs what it costs, we'll understand better that this measure is a, a solution looking for a problem. Thank you, Don. So I guess my first question just kind of goes to the heart of the proposition, and it's why or why not should we have three proposals rather than one or two? Don, would you like to start by answering that? Um, so uh, the way that the city allocates uh, affordable housing to developers is they put out RFPs, or Notices of Funding Availability, and developers respond. There has really virtually never or perhaps never a case where there's only one applicant. applicant. There are always at least two, and that creates competition. The real cost in affordable housing has to do with the cost of land and the cost of construction. And putting the projects out to bid to developers, where the fees are really fixed to developers, won't really address what drives the cost of housing. Thank you. Leah, same question to you. Why, why or why not have three proposals rather than the one or two that currently sometimes get through? Yes, so prior to 2011, there was competitive bidding where there was three or more bids requested for affordable housing, but as a working class 
mother in San Francisco, you look competitively, whether it's purchasing a car, gas prices, or groceries. So why not do that when you're developing projects and homes in San Francisco? Great. Um, I guess the other question would be, will Proposition P save the city money? Is that what we're aiming to do with this proposition? Leah, would you like to? Yes. Yeah, so. Currently, it's more expensive to build affordable housing than market rate housing. So for example, 49 South Venice, it was 899,000 to build affordable housing. That you could have purchased a development that was already developed and turn it into affordable housing. So we're losing money in this process. So having competitive bidding, you're allowed to see what are the benefits, their engagement in the community, their offering to allow you to get the best bid for this city to ensure that we're not wasting money in the city. Um, there already is competitive bidding for developments and this is how the Mayor's Office of Housing has operated for many many years and continues to. TNDC has applied for 30, 35 of these. We've lost most and, it, and we do win maybe one out of four. So there is ample competition among developers. The real costs have to do with the cost of construction and in order to get a good cost of construction we need complete detailed plans prepared by qualified architects and this measure will not lead to that we'll be asking people to make proposals based on very preliminary plans in addition through this measure we won't have the opportunity to involve the community in helping to inform the design of the buildings and then finally, this will lead to a race to the bottom, if you will, if the cost is the primary driver behind what projects are selected. We'll end up with simple concrete boxes with low cost materials, which is really not in the interest of the people who will be living there. As it stands now, the Mayor's Office of Housing takes cost into consideration in selecting developers, but they also take other things into consideration, including the quality of the development team and the nature of the design. Thank you, Don. We're going to move into closing statements. Leah. Perfect. As a resident, a mother, and a third generation from San Francisco who lives in one of the world's most expensive cities, we all know the importance of comparing prices. We look for the best deals at the grocery store, we shop around for best quality, and we should also do it with our housing options. The city of San Francisco should do the same with affordable housing. That's why voters should support and path Proposition P, rather than lining the pockets of powerful developers, we should be using the money to build more housing units for families in San Francisco. I encourage my fellow San Franciscans to vote that will help taxpayer dollars be put to good use for affordable housing to stand up and vote yes on Proposition P to ensure that we have competitive bidding for San Francisco's affordable housing. Closing statement, Don. Proposition P is trying to do something worthwhile, but it is poorly conceived and poorly worded. There already is competition among developers, and there's competition among construction contractors and subcontractors, which really has to do with what drives the cost of affordable housing. Many officials, both Senator Leno, Assemblymember Ting, the Housing Action Coalition, SPUR, the Democratic Party, are opposed to Proposition P because it is a solution that is looking for a problem. Great. Thank you both for your comments and your time. Thank you. Thank you. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 8th.